a major part of your life must be hidden in the secret place Anna the prophet has taught us how to bring things down whoever can bring Jesus down from heaven can bring any other thing from the realm of the spirit to this realm Anna the prophetess the same thing consistently do you know how many of you got born again ask your mothers mama was not a powerful christian she didn't know much but every night 12 on the dot no matter what your discussion is she has to go and meet with god god i cannot sing but use one of my children 1981 she prayed it 1985 she prayed it 1990 she prayed it and while you were on your way strolling to the club the angel that was sent to defend that sacrifice there are angels that defend sacrifices this is why the bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings there are angels sacrifices substance in the spirit it can be defended by the jealousy of god that's why god does things for people for the sake of others are you learning something tonight so when you pray in the spirit it's not just that you are on your way to become an emoji no it's not just you are on your way to become a woman of god you are converting relationship to power and to the final product it can be a job it can be whatever prayer is not just for deliverance alone the primary assignment of prayer is for fellowship and intimacy and so while it is night no noise you are alone with god there's worship just like this playing lord just to let you know that i love you i'm available to be used by god and there are angels watching there are demons watching the demons that stop your family are also watching they are witnesses of your sacrifice May God deliver this our generation from laxity and unseriousness. Someone looks at you and says, I am your boss. I promise you except this is not my company, you will be fired. Don't fight. If you fight physically, you are not wise. Remember, in the Bible and through history, believers don't just fight physically yet. They go to the realm of the spirit while that man is sleeping you are programming your climate that man is sleeping and is having a vision of a warning yes beware that lady you see is not just a clerk there is a covenant on her life behave yourself he will get up he won't tell you he had the dream he just says how are you this morning i hope you everything have you eaten are you all right our excessive lamentation is proof that we do not know how to correct things in the spirit your church is not growing and you are wondering why and you go back and the spirit of god comes upon you his power comes and the lord says you are missing it here you're not getting it here there is a principle you do not understand this is a generation that only understands power nobody will just believe in you for nothing believe me people need real results in their lives if you're in ministry here or you are going into ministry please hear me among the many things that you need is true spiritual power genuine power that produces real results otherwise get ready for empty pews hallelujah is someone ready to pray we're going to take 10 minutes and we're going to pray in the spirit now hear me be sensitive to the holy ghost as you pray for many of you as you are praying the first revival tonight is your prayer life and your relationship with the holy ghost suddenly you will find out that your all these appetites that continue to eat up your time are suddenly going away are we together are you ready to pray
lift your voice and begin to cry to the Lord in one minute two prayer points prayer point number one please pray it from the depth of your heart shout this loud after me everybody say father one more time say father in the name of Jesus I come by the blood of the lamb and I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me fashioned against my destiny shall prosper lift your voice and begin to pray no weapon no weapon against my health no weapon against the work of the Lord committed to me Parantes katila katosh kate prakata no weapon someone pray no weapon against my children no weapon are you praying against my job my career my spiritual life every spirit around your life is on assignment the spirit of death is on assignment the spirit of infirmity is on assignment the spirit of failure is on assignment they don't come on their own they are sent by an adversary. Hallelujah. Please look up. I know we've not begun to discuss deliverance proper. But let me use one scripture and we pray. Now thanks be to God. Which always causes us to triumph thanks be to God can I tell you this believe me when I tell you that he who the son sets free is free indeed amplified says is really and unquestionably free free from causes free from yokes bondages of darkness are you ready to pray say father by the blood of Jesus the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel I dissociate myself from ancestry I dissociate myself from covenants I dissociate myself from activities of bloodline and inheritance I declare that I have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation i am seated with christ lift your voice and begin to pray resist the devil and he will flee resist him and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony pray oh hallelujah worthy is the lamb to receive honor and glory victory in jesus christ victory by the blood victory over causes victory over altars victory over yokes victory over activities of ancestry Victory. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of Jesse is worthy. And I looked upon the throne and I saw as it were a lamb that had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which were the seven spirits of God my background does not have to be a disadvantage over me because my grandfather was a herbalist my grandmother was a herbalist I don't have to suffer the consequences of yesterday there is a bailout system for me because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession give Jesus a big hand clap give him a big hand clap of victory the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and riches forever and ever his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ I want to declare upon your life one of the ways that we access grace and power is through impartation I want you to believe from the depth of your heart that something will come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare the grace that puts you practically in dominion beginning from today may that grace rest upon you now i prophesy upon your life even by the power of the holy spirit the power that is derived from the word the power that is derived from the ministry of the holy spirit let it begin to speak practically in your life from today practically in your life from today practically in your life from today, life from today. hear me in the name of Jesus from today as you declare it so you see I say it again as you declare it so you see the centurion said for I am a man under authority having soldiers here and there I say to one go and he goeth to one come and he cometh from today whatever you say go to it must go and whatever you call to come it must come and hear me for many of you who have been calling things and they have refused to come I join my faith with you and I call it to your life now and everything you have you have told to go and it has refused to go by the power that raised Christ from the dead we drive it permanently from you from today whoever you bless is blessed whatever you bless is blessed whatever you touch is blessed i pray for every business here no more going down every home here no more backwardness every spiritual life here upward and forward only in the name of jesus christ from today no enchantment and divination against your life will survive and hear me if there be anything that has authorized satan over and against your life in the name of jesus we bring him and his cohorts under your feet thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday i prophesy to you anybody that says over your dead body the ground will open and swallow them Anywhere your name is taken, Makatosh Kalibarato Ziata, Embrekete Kaparakatosh, it shall not stand in the name of Jesus. Hear me. The power to create your possibilities 
and the power to manifest those possibilities. Receive it right now. The power to correct anomalies and the power to command restoration. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus and by the privilege of priesthood, I empower you this night. Go and correct every wrong thing in your life. Go and correct every wrong thing. Financially, maritally, spiritually, intellectually, in your health, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. From tonight, anything you see that is inconsistent with what is written, even if it's what you saw, or what you heard, or what you dreamt, or what was told you, I empower you to change it with the written word. Hear me. Anyone here who is a victim of I heard prophecy, anyone who is a victim of I saw visions, anyone who is a victim of they told me altered perceptions, I change it now by the power of it is written. Anyone who has seen you dying, I speak to you, you will live. Anyone who has seen you poor, I speak to you, you must prosper. Anyone who has said your territory will be hostile to you, I prophesy over you, for you there is a lifting up. Favor rests upon you. The dominion power of the spirit rests upon you. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you precious people of God the spirit of revelation that gives you knowledge and understanding drawing light out of scripture and experiences receive that grace now no more study of the Bible without revelation high level spiritual illumination hear me by this dominion power anywhere you are supposed to be called in this season for good news and for your rising I don't care how long it has been. I declare they must identify you and lift you. Hear me. I'm speaking to the body of Christ, but particularly those who are connected to this grace. From today, the grace for influence, the grace for dominion, the grace to be exalted above nations and territories. I release that grace of help them. I release that grace upon you now. You will be distinguished in such a spectacular way. I want you to believe what I'm telling you. Nations will honor you. Governments will honor you. Not just individuals. They will look for you regardless your background. They will look for you regardless your limitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God put it in the heart of great men to look for you. May God put it in the heart of helpers to help you. you. Hear me. I know that our nation is being plagued with a lot of things. Let me speak for one minute. We owe a duty as priests to speak over this nation and over Abuja. I stand by the apostolic. We close the spiritual borders of FCT over terrorists. I decree and declare that the spiritual borders of the FCT is hereby closed against any activity of terrorism. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as it is closed over this city, it's closed over your home too. No devil of darkness will kidnap you and your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And anybody that vows to become your enemy, quarter to execution, may this dominion covenant fight them. Let me pray over your finances. Please believe it. Among the many indices that measure dominion, second or third only to your spiritual health, is your financial level. I am one person who believes that the blessing of the Lord upon a heart that loves Jesus and a mind that is transformed is a blessing indeed. Let me repeat, 
the blessing of the Lord activated upon a heart that loves Jesus and a mind that is transformed is a blessing indeed. Resources only become a disadvantage and a disaster if they rest in the heart of one who has a heart that does not love Jesus and a mind that is not superior in thinking. And because I'm sure of what God has done in your life, I speak over you. Some of you this week, in the name of Jesus, may my God surprise you financially. May my God open strange doors, connect you to systems and structures. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every limitation that has come with lack, I decree and declare, whether corporately or institutionally, be delivered from it now. <laughs> Finally, let me speak over your body. There is a spirit that is sweeping across this nation and regions, just killing people using the guise of sickness. People will just tell you, I'm having stomach ache, having this, having that, and then you just die. There are others, they look at you and say, oh, you are this, this headache is like that. It's part of your family. I decree and declare, every sickness that is locking around your body, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, since this dominion mandate has rested upon you, let that sickness leave you now. Cancer leaves you now. High blood pressure leaves you now. Blindness leaves you now. Blood conditions go now. Blood pressures are normalized now. Pile leaves you now. Bone conditions leave you now. In the name of Jesus. So that you can enjoy health. Remember dominion is for men. Spirits that have human bodies. And anything that fights your body is fighting the mandate of dominion upon you. Therefore may your body be perfected. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is broken. Your bones will not be broken. Someone pray. You're praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You are praying that that which has been apportioned from the womb of eternity be delivered to you tonight. Shalibaka praska de balanda brazige de belekoshia. Shade brende ge balato siata. Pray without distraction. Pray fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. Shabrandege balakato sabrandege de balakasiata shabarande kaparusia. You are opening up your spirit, even in prayer. The Bible says, and as they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said to them. As they worshipped and as they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said to them, Shalika parandas katebre de gabala subrasiatabas. Oh, come, oh, come, be mad, well. And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, me mad. Well, will you ransom captive Israel? Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. He has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. You have come to us, your Israel. We rejoice. Rejoice, 
Emmanuel has come to us. His Israel. You have come to me, your Israel. Will you speak to me, your Israel? Majesty, we worship you. This is the Bible. This is open. But it does not mean the seal has been unlocked. Opening it is physical. Unlocking the seal is spiritual. So you can open the Bible and all you are reading is history. All you are reading is literature. All you are reading is archaeology. All you are reading is poetry. But when the spirit of grace unlocks the seven seals. And you may say, I'm educated. I mean, I went to school. I have PhD. I have all of that. You see, when it comes to spiritual things. Assimilating spiritual things must go past the realm of intellect. You know this by now. Isaiah 29. Let's look at verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 29. I believe it's verse 11. Please give it to us. It says, the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Someone say sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. So when it has to do with the opening of the book and the riches therein, whether you are learned or unlearned, if you are learned, it can only open for you. But it takes the Spirit of God to break the seals. Your Spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. No wonder the psalmist said, Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things even from out of thy law. Someone say the word of God. Now, having established the fact that the word of God is the foundation for dominion and that all things, including all other laws, submit to the word of God, let us now discuss the ordinances of heaven. What is an ordinance? Please write. What is an ordinance? An ordinance is a law set forth by a governmental authority my apologies please write fast an ordinance is a law set forth by a governmental authority a law that is set forth by a governmental authority another definition an ordinance is a decree another definition the one that applies to us now an ordinance is an authorized pathway or approach. One more time. An ordinance is number one, a law that is set forth by a governmental authority. Number two, an ordinance is a decree. Number three, an ordinance is an authorized pathway. Please underline authorized pathway or approach. 
That means when we say the ordinances of heaven, we mean God's authorized approach. The system that was set up by God himself to guarantee dominion. There are many illegal paths that spirits and even men have followed in an attempt to exert different levels of dominion. They have several side effects. For instance, losing your soul to gain the whole world. Gaining the whole world looks like dominion over material things. But because you are not following an ordinance that was set up by God, the ordinance of heaven, the side effect, if you ever try to acquire material things outside of the way provided by scripture, the Bible already tells you that there will be a side effect. The side effect is that you will lose your soul. So it says, what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. Satan tempting Jesus took him and showed him the glories of all the world in a passage of time. And said bow to me and I will give you. Hallelujah. An ordinance is an authorized pathway. My goodness. That means every time you walk in that ordinance... There is predictability to your results. Are we learning now? When you walk in keeping with the ordinances of heaven as touching any and every area of your life, the resultant effect will be dominion. Follow me as I share with you a rundown of the rules of engagement. You want to walk in dominion practically? Here are the biblical keys. All together... They are called the ordinances of heaven. Number one. Are you ready? The first ordinance of heaven that controls dominion is the knowledge. Knowledge in fact. But more particularly, the knowledge of the promises of God. Knowledge. That means dominion in this kingdom was tied and bound to knowledge. Based on the ordinances of God, there cannot be dominion in ignorance. Is someone learning now? Yes. That is the purpose of scripture. To help you gain knowledge of the principles. I have taught you here that the Bible essentially contains three things. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. You must know what the Bible says. Not just have a Bible. You must know what scripture says. A few scriptures. A few scriptures for, to establish this point. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. Not just have the truth. You can be around the truth. It will not profit you. You can be in possession of the truth. It will not profit you. Like many people have their Bibles, they hold it sanctimoniously, they move around. Many people have their libraries full of all kinds of Bibles. Contained in those books are kingdom secrets. And yet they continue to suffer. Somebody say knowledge. Psalms 49 and verse 20. We already established that that man that is in honor and does not know it, he will die like a beast in the field. Luke chapter 4, please, from verse 15 to 17. Is God helping us? Say amen. The Bible says, And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. We are reading to 17. Next verse. And it came to pass where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Watch this now, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found. Oh, I like this. When he opened the book, when did he find? There are many things you will only find when you open the book. There are many realms you will only find when you open the book. There are many testimonies you will only find when you open the book. The Bible says when he opened the book, he found. For someone, this is your word tonight. God is telling you, you have not found many things because you have closed the book. If you have a determination to open the book, you will find. 
Now the Bible says, please keep that scripture. He found the place where it was written. When you find the place where it is written, now you have committed God. I told you, God is only committed to the degree to which it is written. Not just to the degree to which he loves you. Not just the degree to which he is powerful. God is committed. Please listen, burn this in your spirit. If you want to walk in dominion, no wonder this already answers the question why children or people can be dying around the world and yet the almighty God who is full of love Many people say, why does evil happen to good people? Because the modus operandi of heaven is by the word of God, not just his love. He loves everybody, but he is bound to his word. The principles contained therein. If you lack knowledge of scripture, knowledge of the promises of God, you are far from walking in dominion. Can I tell you, if you are not exerting dominion, someone or something will exert it on you. Is that true? Give us that scripture. Let's finish it up. He found, he opened the book and he found the place where it was written. In the name of Jesus, may you find where it was written. Open the place and find where it is written that regardless your background, you will be exalted above the nations of the earth. When you find it, God is ready to to, to be committed to your affairs. The knowledge of the promises. Say knowledge. In the name of Jesus, obtain grace to fight ignorance. Now, you see why it is important to come to the house of God. Because among the many things that are served in the house of God, according to Jeremiah 3.15, is knowledge. 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 It says, and I will give you pastors according unto my heart. They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Two important elements. I'm going to connect them shortly. Someone say knowledge. Ignorance is terrible. The Bible shows us. And even history and today's world, our living today tells us the moment you are in ignorance, any kind and any level of ignorance, it will come with a cost. Rules of engagement. You want to operate the ordinances of heaven. Number one, you must understand that dominion is knowledge dependent. High level spiritual illumination. Knowledge. You must know what is there for you. I remember an old story. I can't remember which preacher um, spoke about it. But it was a very old story about someone who boarded a ship going somewhere. And the person did not know that part of the... The, the ticket he purchased had free maybe dinner or so and the guy was starving quietly in his room happy and grateful for even being in that ship and his position was vacant every night and then one of the attendants came to knock his door to find out if he was all right and he said look i'm fine he was managing a biscuit or something every day would take a little of it and they said, sorry, we noticed you've not come to eat. Ah, no, 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 no. I can't, don't embarrass me. I'm more than happy to be here. I'm only praying that we arrive safely. And the woman had to educate him to tell him, no, 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 no. It was already covered in your ticket. And the man was angry. Like some of you are angry now. That so I could be blessed five years ago. So I could be lifted ten years ago. So these demons didn't have that kind of power over me. You can imagine that that man will say, go on, let's count from how many days we started. Ah! Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Hey! Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Now is it making sense to you what we began to discuss? That the expressions of dominion has to do with Number one, creation slash manifestation Two, correction and restoration Correction and, manifest and restoration So knowledge, very quickly let's rush Number two, 
What is the second ordinance of heaven as far as walking in dominion is concerned? Are you ready? The knowledge of the conditions or demands that activate the promises. It is one thing to know the promises, but you must know the conditions and the demands that activates the operation of those promises. Please write this down. This is what the Bible calls understanding. Write it please. Knowledge as powerful as it is. Is only the first key. You can have knowledge and still perish. Hmm. Knowledge here talks about awareness. I know that it is in my destiny to be great. I know that I am a believer in Christ. I should be raised. I am raised above situations and circumstances but just having that head knowledge that awareness does not make it your experience the knowledge of the conditions is someone learning now that means your knowledge is not complete until you find out the conditions or the demands that activate the promise you just learned about the knowledge of the conditions the requirements to activate the promises. This is what the Bible calls understanding. No wonder it says in all your getting. Get understanding. Is it in your Bible? You now see that a good man of God should not just give you knowledge. According to Jeremiah 3.15. If a man of God gives you knowledge alone. That may not do you justice. It must be knowledge, awareness. And then understanding. An in-depth explanation of the demands and the dynamics that activate and release that promise. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord commanded Moses 9 and 6. This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Now you can read that the glory of the Lord should appear and just stand there and say, I know the glory of the Lord will appear and nothing happens. Because there is something that you must do. I submit to you that many believers have done well in terms of, you know, giving themselves that spiritual orientation. To know that which has been freely given to us. But very few believers have gone past the realm of knowledge to comprehension, understanding. No wonder... Many believers say it is all up to God. If God is going to do it, He will do it. No. There are many things God wants to do, but He's restrained by our ignorance. Understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass popular scripture, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. Take note. All his commandments. Which I command thee this day. So that is the condition. What is the result of that condition? The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. You know why I use this scripture all the time? Because it has become a personal revelation for me. Believe me. I studied this scripture until I truly believed it. And I found the conditions. And I said, that's it. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. In John chapter 2, the wedding in Cana, for sake of time, we'll just go straight to verse 5. Mary is giving them a very powerful counsel. Hallelujah. John chapter 2, the wedding in Cana. The Bible says, his mother saith unto his servants. The wine finished now, remember? And, you know, they were getting embarrassed and they came to plead with Mary to talk to her son, Jesus. And the mother said, don't embarrass me while we are going now. Make sure as you are following me, you are determined to do whatever he tells you. That is my counsel. His mother said unto them, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. It is more than saying it. It is doing it. God can say unto you, you are blessed. But if you don't do that which activates the blessing, 
you can remain with knowledge you are not in ignorance and yet never walk into the experience of it everybody say knowledge number two say understanding one more time say knowledge number two say understanding now let me give you something very powerful the knowledge of the truth i wrote here and the understanding of the conditions that activate the truth equal revelation the knowledge of the truth and the understanding of the conditions that activate that truth is what is equal revelation so don't you say i have revelation of scripture if you just have knowledge no for you to say you have come to a point of revelation you must have knowledge you must have understanding you may want to write for remembrance knowledge of the truth plus understanding of the conditions equal revelation no wonder apostle paul taught the church in corinth he was praying ephesians 1 and verse 15 now you will understand by this expression i just gave you wherefore i also we're reading to 17 it says after i have heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all the saints 16 it says cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers can we read verse 17 together one to read that the god of our lord jesus christ uh -huh, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of revelation in the knowledge stop are you seeing there in the knowledge in that knowledge that is where you find revelation knowledge is like a shell it carries within it revelation knowledge is the parable of the ten virgins revelation is the depth and the spiritual meaning that you can draw from it knowledge is reading the story of israel wow you mean this guy suffered like this but pharaoh must be a wicked man he didn't even pity them knowledge are we together revelation is now where you understand that they are passing through the red sea is a type of the new birth experience that separated them with egypt forever it didn't separate them from enemies but it separated them from egypt hallelujah most people do not have revelation that is the reason why they cannot walk in dominion we pride ourselves respectfully speaking especially in the body of christ we pride ourselves as men of god pastors apostles teachers there is so much knowledge but believe me when i tell you there is little revelation because once revelation comes that's what you call light knowledge is the bulb understanding is the switch revelation is the light you can be in a room the bulb is there the switch is there but you are still dark so if the problem you need is not a new bulb the bulb there is working the problem is not the switch it is not spoiled yet the light cannot come for someone you already have the bulb it has been there for decades the switch is there even written on slash off and when demons want to punish you they will block where the switch is so that you cannot even see it again but when you come for koinonia like this among the many things that god does is he shows you that there is a beautiful bulb there the knowledge you already have then he shows you the switch and then he says apostle now i leave the rest and then i will lead you and say you should own it in such a way that the light comes on it and tie it to remain on there so that there is no more darkness because he called the light day and the darkness he called night so light is not just day is not just the passage of time i have taught you anytime your light comes your day has come even if it's by 12 midnight once your light comes it no longer becomes night 
The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises in sickness by His word. Hallelujah. Someone, light is coming for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. With light, there is confidence. When there is darkness, you walk gradually, your hands first, or your feet first. You are not sure what will hit you. Something will hit you and yet you cannot know. But right now, once there is light, you can run around a room. So there is speed with light. You'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Listen. Brothers and sisters, we must obtain grace from God to move past the realm of knowledge, as important as it is. And then with understanding, that brings you to the realm of revelation. Is someone learning? Ordinance number one, a recap. Knowledge. Knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the promises. Awareness of what God has left in store for you. Ordinance number two. Understanding. A comprehension of the demands. Please underline it. tied. Whatever you need to do. That means before you think of approaching any matter. Find out. Do I understand the demand or the requirement to activate it? Number three. Someone ready for number three? The third key is the faith to engage the principles. Faith to engage the principles. You have knowledge. You have understanding. So now you have revelation. But you see, knowing what to do and Knowing how to do it does not mean it will be done. I have taught you extensively on faith. But permit me to just touch, even if it's just a scripture. I have taught you that faith in one word is obedience. Every time we talk about faith, let it not be a complicated concept. In one word, faith is obedience. Everywhere you see the word faith in the Bible... You can almost satisfactorily replace it with the word obedience and you will not be in error. Faith in one word is obedience. A better expression, the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. That is called faith. And the Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our actions of obedience. Faith. Hebrews chapter 4, we'll read verse 1 and 2, then we'll jump to verse 9 and we'll end at 11. The Bible says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So two categories of people, us and them. But the word preached did not profit them. It didn't release to them its potentials. Not being mixed with obedience. Are you seeing now? Not being mixed with action in them that heard it. Verse 9. There remained therefore, precious people of God, a rest. They are the people of God. But there is a kind of spiritual Sabbath financial sabbath that god wants to bring you into verse 10 it says we're reading to 11 for he that is entered into his rest he hath also ceased from his own works as god did from his 
Here is the charge. Let us labor therefore. What is the labor? The labor of faith. The labor of believing. The labor of understanding. And the labor of acting. Let us labor to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Everybody say faith. Without faith there is no dominion. If God has told you that you can step into financial dominion. Now you know that the promises are there for you. And then you learn by, by scripture the principles that are allocated for dominion. Now you know your own commitment. It is up to you now to begin to manifest faith. The giving experientially. The diligence. The value. The connection strategically through relationships. All of these things until you do them. You are not walking by faith. Faith is not saying what God has said. It is only part of faith. Real faith is doing what God has said. You can say what God has said. Congratulations. Confession is important. We are getting there. But you must do what God has said. Now let me teach you something very quickly. According to scripture, there are three levels of faith. We we'll find somewhere now, I think just one, two more points. And then we'll pray. I need to teach you this. There are three levels of faith. Because you have an assignment to grow your faith. The pace with which you believe and obey God. Is the pace with which you keep getting results. Even dominion. Number one. The Bible identifies a condition called no faith. Mark 4. From verse 35 to 40. Mark 4. From verse 35 to 40. No faith. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Uh -huh. And the Bible says, they left the multitude and then they sailed to the other side. Verse 37. The Bible says, there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. 38. The Bible says that Jesus was at the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish that means anxiety is proof of the absence of faith 39 he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto it peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm now 40 and he said unto them why is it that ye are so fearful how is it that ye have no faith. It is possible for a believer to have zero faith. The same way you score zero in a subject. You can have zero faith. John 20, 27. John chapter 20 and verse 27. Remember Thomas, our wonderful Thomas? With every time we have blackmailed people with Thomases. And, and every time they say Thomas, we mean somebody who does not believe. But that's not true. Thomas had the courage to come close to Jesus. What of Thomas being intimacy? You see? What of Thomas being intimacy with Jesus Christ? Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither my hands, and thrust into my side. He says, And be not faithless, but believing. So you can have zero faith. Shout God forbid. Let the devil hear you. No faith. Number two, we have small or weak faith. The Bible tells us that we can have small or weak faith. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall ye, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Matthew chapter 8 and verse 26. Matthew 8 and verse 26. He said unto them, Why are ye fearful? Have, are you noticing that there is always a relationship between fear and no faith or little faith? O ye of little faith. He arose, rebuked the wind, and all of that. And then... um. One last scripture, Romans chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19. This is Abraham now. 
God's, God's expression of faith and the blessing. The Bible says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 19. The Bible says, And be not weak in faith. Be not weak in faith. So you can be weak in faith. And one of the ways you become weak in faith is by considering by creating logic. How will God do this? The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way? Hallelujah. Then we have strong or great faith. Strong or great faith. Just write for reference, we may not read it. Matthew 15, 21 to 28 talks of strong or great faith. But we'll read Romans 4 and verse 20. Romans 4 and verse 20. Still talking about Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So we see that there is no faith, there is small or weak faith, and there is strong or great faith. Some of us are on zero faith. You are welcome hearing the word now. We'll start priming that that condition and then many of us have remained at the realm of small or weak faith but i pray that everybody that will join this category of they whose faith is very strong if you believe that say amen, amen. ordinance number four am i right on that ordinance number four these are the authorized pathways in the spirit for dominion Remember, number one, you must have knowledge. Dominion is knowledge dependent. Awareness of the promises. Awareness of truth. Number two, understanding. A comprehension of the demands and the principles that activate the promises and commit God. Then, number three, you must be ready and willing to act and to act completely. Now, number four. The fourth ordinance of dominion. Is called the power of words. This is a kingdom that operates by words. This is a kingdom that is voice activated. Dominion in this kingdom is voice activated. The power of words. This is where the ministry of prayer and the ministry of prophetic declaration comes. The ministry of prayer falls under this ordinance of words. The ministry of prophetic declarations and decrees falls under the ordinance of words. There is no true dominion in silence. Words have to be captured for dominion to be established. Hallelujah. Now please look up. If words are that important as far as activating and establishing dominion is concerned... You now see why things like prayerlessness are a disaster. That if you are not prayerful, you will destroy your, your life and your destiny and sabotage your potentials for walking in dominion. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. And God said, words, and God said, let there be, and there was. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. We're looking at the fourth ordinance. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Say, I am royalty. One more time, say, I am royalty. That means your word should not be without power. But there has to be words first before power. Where the word of a king is. Some of you, as you said, I'm royalty. The devil said, even you, you better say it again. Say, I'm royalty. Because... When you say I'm royalty, this, 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 some of this, the way some of us have suffered and we've been defeated by Satan, you know, he just tempts you and says, you better don't say that. Those who have power are saying it. And you who just came to church for the first time, you are also saying you are royalty. Yes, sir. If he talks to you like that, tell him it is written is greater than what I'm hearing. I've told you. You don't have to feel like royalty to say you are royalty. The baby who is born from a royal palace, the baby does not even know 
that he or she is royalty, but it does not change the fact anyway. Are we together? Mm. He has made us unto our God kings and priests. I wanted to say, say you are a king, but if you say you are a king, ladies, if you say you are a queen, somebody will say queen of the coast, and that's why I said say royalty. <laughs> You are not queen of any coast. You are royalty. Seated with Christ. Listen to me. In the realm of the spirit, there is no male declaration or female declaration. There is no male prayer or female prayer. Are we together? There is only prayer that works or prayer that does not work. Watch this. The Bible says in Job 22 and 28, we're still looking at the power of words. Thou shalt also decree a thing, the Bible declares, and it shall be established unto thee. Who is the thee? The thee who made the decree. Not just he who was watching as they were making. Thou shalt decree a thing. Please, I want you to understand that the dynamics of dominion demands that there must be words. There must be words. That is why the assignment of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where you cannot speak. What is wrong? I know God can do it. That means close my door. Go out of there. But for someone, even with no money in your pocket, you will declare, Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ, words. Write this down, please. In Mark chapter 11, when you read from verse 12 to 14, and then you go to 20 to 24, just write it for reference, Mark 11, 12 to 14, and then 20 to 24. This was when Jesus came and saw a fig tree that had leaves but no fruit, and he cursed it and said, No man eateth of you again. Hallelujah. And then remember, from that, according to Mark's account, he went to flog people in the temple, and then when they returned back by the morrow, they found out that the tree was withered. And they said, Master, you said this and it has happened. And he began to speak to them. He said, If thou shalt say to this mountain, Be ye lifted and cast yonder into the sea, and believe with thy heart that that which you have said will come to pass, you shall have it. Is that true? And then he says, What thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. James chapter 5, the full text is from 13 to 28, but give us verse 15 just for the sake of time. James chapter 5, the Bible says the prayer of faith, somebody say the prayer of faith. That means not every prayer is answered. When you begin to read from verse 15, verse 13, the Bible says if any man afflicted, he said let him pray. Most believers pray. But there are prayers that do not, they carry a lot of energy perhaps, they carry a lot of speaking perhaps, but they may never produce results. Back to 15 please. It says the prayer of faith, that is the prayer that saves, that is the prayer that raises up, and that is the prayer that brings intervention. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of faith. You know what the prayer of faith is? The prayer of faith is word-inspired, word-based prayer. One more time. Word-inspired, word-based prayer. Not emotional prayer. Not God have come. If you keep watching me like this, I will also watch you. It's just the mercy of God you need at that point. Not answer to prayers. Because remember, God loves you so much, He gave Jesus for you. But I taught you that He is bound by His word. 
All of these sentiments we whip up in the place of prayer, we think because we are touched by our own sentiments, it means that God is touched. No, He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but He only responds to His word. That's what makes Him a God of integrity, that not even His feelings can change His action. The Father saw Jesus dying and was touched and yet did not do anything because at that point he was seen. That is what makes him a God of integrity. So if you think by just whipping up emotions, God will somehow find a way to continue to vindicate you, you may be in trouble. You need knowledge. You need faith. The prayer of faith will save the sick, will raise him up, and will bring intervention. Most believers pray... But the basis of our prayer ministry is emotions or just shouting up and down. Once you are not praying in tongues, the next thing you should be doing is praying word-based prayers. Father, thank you. Your word declares that I should come to you boldly. Now I have come and that in the name of Jesus. I ask this and that. The Bible declares what things soever I desire. This is what I desire. The Bible says I should not be anxious for anything. I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, I reject anxiety. I bring before you these petitions. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 6 that I should be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I should let my request be made known. Father, I bring before you this issue of rent. I know that you are faithful. I obtain wisdom to know what to do. You are praying. Are we together? But there are many people, the way they pray, even you who is listening to them at the other side of the fence, you are just imagining and say, you will even start praying and say, Lord, please, just forgive this thing they are saying. Use my intercession to help them. And the danger is that when God keeps showing you mercy in ignorance, you will think it is the excellence of your approach that brought the result. So he will leave you so that maturity can step in. It's why a lot of new believers pray nonsense and still get answers. And then later God says, no, 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 no. You have to rise and strive. Remember our teaching to strive for mastery. And for that, pray properly. Are we together? That prayer, people pray in front of food, some have food. And it's wonderful. But that's just to help children. You are an adult, you approach that way, it's ingratitude. You have to settle down and understand how the Bible, maturity 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 if you see a child dropping five naira as offering that's fine for his age but if you see somebody who is working in an oil company holds five naira whether it's new or old dropping it you will look at him and say sir give this even to your governors the bible says they will not accept because to whom much is given much is expected god is challenging us tonight if you want to walk in dominion then we have to obtain grace from god are we together to be people of word-based prayer and word-based declaration let me give you the final key thank you very much for your patience the final key tonight if you want to walk in dominion then you will need to encounter the anointing there is the anointing that activates this. It's called the power of God. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, According as His divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us into glory and virtue. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Very, very powerful scripture. The Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord, and great grace was upon them all. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. We are discussing the anointing now. Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus, and among the many things he prayed that would be revealed to them was the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. 
Jesus is speaking to the disciples now who would later become apostles of the Lamb. He says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Men can be endued with power from on high. Luke chapter 1, remember? The discussion between Gabriel and Mary, verse 34. Luke 1, 34 and 35. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall these things be, seeing I know not a man? The answer, next verse. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Whatever comes out by the power of God must be attributed to God. The power of God only produces that which pleases the Lord. Listen to me. It takes power to make promises manifest here and now. You can read that by his stripes I am healed. You can understand that confession and all these things are there. But now the Bible says if somebody is sick... Verse um, James chapter 5 and verse 14 That if someone is sick He should call on the elders Are we together now? Elders simply means Those who by reason of experience With results They have obtained a ranking That is worth recognition The elders of the church And let them pray So prayer also solves the issue of sickness Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And then the Bible says, the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. In John chapter 1 and verse 12. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, he gave them power. What do you get after you receive him? Power. The power that makes you become the Son of God. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Ye shall receive power. Tells you, after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, ye shall receive power. That means one of the many supplies of the Spirit is power. Give us Philippians 1.19. Power resides absolutely within the office of the Holy Spirit. It says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. There is what the Spirit supplies. You cannot embrace power ignoring the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's when you embrace the Holy Spirit. Mary, uh, angel, the angel Gabriel told Mary, the Holy Ghost will come upon you first, then the power of the highest will overshadow you. He said you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power is not independent of relationship with the Holy Spirit. Please keep that scripture. Philippians 1, 19. But I know that this shall turn to my salvation. That is dominion. I know that whatever the issue is, I can correct it, I can enforce restoration, but it will happen through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as walking practically in dominion is concerned, these are the ordinances of heaven. And he told Job, Job, one of the many reasons why you are a victim is because you do not understand the ordinances of heaven. The laws that regulate the heavens. And he says, Canst thou set up the dominion over the earth? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Do you know that heaven operates by knowledge? Do you know that heaven operates by understanding? Do you know that it takes faith? That is why disobedience is not tolerated in heaven. Because heaven is a place that epitomizes faith in God. Every time there is rebellion in heaven, defiance, there is judgment immediately. And there was war in heaven. Heaven is a place of perfect faith because of perfect obedience. And then you must realize that dominion 
depends on words the ministry of prayer the ministry of prophetic declaration but words and finally there is an empowerment from god that comes upon individuals after all this is said that power grants you the grace it is the power that enforces compliance so if god tells you you are going to prosper you believe that word you understand the principles connected to it that becomes revelation you take steps in keeping with the truth then in the place of prayer and declarations now you are fulfilling the word component then you activate the power to prosper now you can have financial dominion is someone learning let them have dominion the ordinances of heaven you can carry this truth tonight like a student holding something that can profit him and stand before any situation and use this formula and find your way out when you stand before anything that seems to defy your dominion and authority don't just start speaking and say no in jesus name you are going to go uh -uh. am i speaking out of knowledge am i speaking out of understanding what i am saying is it revelation to me no wonder the sons of skiva remember we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches they violated the ordinance they spoke but it was not out of revelation and the demon said jesus i know paul i know but who are you jesus i know why because jesus had knowledge he had understanding he had revelation by the spirit jesus prayed he activated his possibilities through words jesus was a man of faith and the power of the highest came upon him we are where we are today by the grace of god but enforced through the application of this ordinance of heaven hear me families can enforce these ordinances businesses can enforce these ordinances marriages and homes can enforce these ordinances finance corporations can enforce these ordinances and even nations can enforce these ordinances we continue to speak over our dear nation and for many we, we keep saying in jesus name nigeria will change and it looks like no change is happening we have to go back first to the place of revelation and then the place of obedience what is the obedience if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and i'll forgive their sin and heal their land next is the ministry of prophetic intercessors i search for a man to stand in the gap that i may not destroy the land next are the people who are sent as sheep among wolves that god will grant believers the wisdom to know how to operate the cosmos and glorify christ until that is done we are wasting our time the ordinances of heaven are you ready to pray tonight i want you to stand up on your feet don't begin to pray just stand up please stand in the next 10 seconds i want you to think about your life think about every aspect of your life whether you're outside you're inside following online i just want you to think for one minute about your life the many areas of limitation the many areas where the truth of dominion is not yet speaking in your life i want you to honestly and sincerely examine those areas just a few seconds of self-examination i have seen the faithfulness of god in the area of the anointing but the area of family life or area of finances or area of parenting raising my children or area of character i have not seen dominion happen lord i know there has to be a way i take responsibility just think for one minute we're about to pray so that you don't just pray arbitrarily lord my christian experience needs to come into a greater level of richness a greater level of quality let them have dominion is your mandate and your expectation over me many people have died who should not have died simply because i did not understand the ordinances of heaven there are many lives that are limited today perhaps including mine you'll be praying all because 
I do not understand the ordinances of heaven. Now I have been taught knowledge, understanding, becoming revelation, and then faith, and then the power of words in prayer and prophetic decrees, and then the engracing of the Spirit. Now, I don't know which of these four or five areas you need to pray for. Give yourself a prayer point by what you find out as the limitation. Which of these five ordinances have you not worked consistently in keeping with? Go ahead and pray. For some of you is sheer ignorance. You are not even aware of the promises. And there's nothing to be embarrassed about. The house of God is Bethel. is the place of bread. It's time for you to pray. Lord, I'm tired of ignorance. Perhaps you just got born again. Congratulations for coming into the kingdom now you begin the experience of thriving in the kingdom through knowledge there are those who have knowledge lord i'm tired of awareness i've gone for meetings but i do not have a thorough comprehension what role do i have to play what is my own demand what do you require of me as far as this and that area of my life is concerned please make sure you are praying For many of us, it's the area of obedience. Stepping out in faith. Kill fear, oh God, from my life. I need to step out in faith. In total obedience. Taking the required action that commits God. For some of you, you have been too silent to walk in dominion. Too silent. No prayer. Too silent. No prophetic decrees. Or wrong decrees. He says, say not before an angel, I made a mistake. Is someone pray? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, the Bible declares. In prayer, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, most of us have lost the art of prayer. Genuine prayer, commanding power with God in prayer. And prophetic declar declarations. Many of us are full of negative statements. We speak negatively about ourselves, our children, negatively about others, negatively about situations and circumstances. Our words are not faith filled. It's time to change your confession. It has to be as the Word of God says. The ministry of prayer. The ministry of prophetic declaration. Someone is praying. And finally, I'd like you to pray. Father, the level of anointing that must rest upon my life from tonight. To activate dominion practically in my life. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. My home must reflect dominion. My job must reflect dominion. My cooperation must reflect dominion. You are a man of God. Pray. I must see dominion expressed in the work that the Lord has committed to my hands. Tired of being a victim of situations and circumstances. Hallelujah. The Lord God's people. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you so much. Thank you so much for staying tuned to this time, watching this ministration from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. We believe so much that these messages and the words and the prayers and the declarations are impacting your life so much, so much so that you are not beginning to conform to the image of the Christ. That the blessings in scriptures are for us to take. It is for us to take for us our generation our sons our daughters for us to take it is not just there as written words the bible said the words i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the communications we hear are sounds from our videos on reflector of tv it is not just there to just um, be a video alone but it has to let it be a form of impact a form of a transmission of these blessings from god's servant apostle Jesus selman to you who is listening and who is following and who is watching that your life transforms and take a whole new turn by the power of the spirit of god
so we bless you so much thank you so much for staying today this time for those of us who are yet to subscribe to this channel reflector of tv we advise you to do so because we have a lot of videos about god's servant apostle joshua selman if you love god's servant and you love god we we'll love you to subscribe to this channel stay tuned with us click on your notification bell to always receive updates on all of our latest and newest uploads we upload videos every day on this channel praise the lord and for those of us who are who have been asking and saying that um where can i download apostle Jesus cinema messages where can i see his audio messages to download and listen to um would love you to follow on our description the description box we will have a link there for all of the messages that we upload our telegram channel is there you can follow our channel at our, our telegram channel or you can follow our whatsapp channel to get most of these videos you can go through our, our short slide to watch short video of apostle Jesus selman and these videos will surely 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 no doubt by the spirit of god bless your life greatly in the name of jesus christ thank you so much god people we love you we celebrate you and please stay tuned to watch the next video the lord bless you so